Okay, this is where we left off. The two parallel passages again, G tracking to Peter. Almost verbatim. And this is kind of the way that Mark wrapped around uh, Matthew and Luke. Um, taking verbatim quotes so that you could follow where Mark was going because Mark is making different points of the same information versus Matthew and Luke and also introducing new text that same style of hi I'm a new Bible book here's how I established myself as being from God that same style is being con continued by Jude with reference to 2 Peter 2 so that helps us know that, yes, it's meant to be canon. It's not the only proof, but it's part of the number of proofs you need to do when you're writing a new Bible book to establish that it's a Bible book as opposed to just a sermon or something else. Okay? Now, at this point, Jude is going to skip over this part of what Peter says and yet at the same time incorporate it by reference because look woe to them okay they have taken the way now he's introducing a new you know extra analogies versus what Peter wrote they've taken the way of Cain they've rushed for profit into Balaam's error okay so now just by doing that he's concatenated all this into his one statement here in verse 11 you see the point? And he's introducing extra parallels. He's trying to basically tell you that the error that's occurring in their midst right now at the false teachers is the same error that Cain got into, and of course the same error for profit that Balaam got into, okay, because Balaam was paid to, you know, prophesy against Israel. And then he's also paralleling Korah's rebellion, which was a rebellion against Moses by some in Israel at the time during the wandering in the wilderness okay and then he kind of he comes back see where it says blots and blemishes here in Peter so now he comes back to what Peter was saying blemishes at your love feasts now see he's being more specific the love feast was communion okay so he's saying that these guys are showing up at communion so they're they're believers they're saved. Okay? Eating with you without the slightest qualms. Shepherds, they're teachers who feed only themselves. False teachers, though. Okay? Reveling in their pleasures while they feast with you. See, it will be paid back. It's all future tense here in Peter. So what he's doing is he's taking Peter and he's turning it into present tense. This is what they are now. Okay? Eyes full of adultery. They will never stop sinning. They seduce the unstable, experts in grief. And both of these chapters, both of these books, Jude and Peter, are playing back to what the Lord predicted in Matthew 23. Okay? And here's again Balaam of Baor. Now, what's interesting here is straightway is Uthus. And that's a key word in Mark. Okay? which implies that Mark is elaborating on both Jude and Peter, so Mark comes after both, which would then mean that Jude is written early. So even though he's saying remind, it's almost as if he's reminding within the same year. Okay? Because Mark's, this is one of the most pregnant words in Mark, and I already documented that in videos, utus and engus, utus being much more common. And that's derived from Isaiah. Make straight the paths of the Lord. It's translated straight, next, immediately, right away. In English. Okay? Wandered off, that's planao. Okay? To follow the way of Baal. Uh, Balaam. Okay? Because they're, they're making money off being Christian shepherds. Who feed only themselves. In other words, what they say doesn't feed the flocks. Is feeding themselves okay and then there's more detail here that that Jude leaves out on the left hand side but Balaam was rebuked for his wrongdoing by an ass a beast without speech who spoke with a man's voice and restrained the prophets madness and then okay look 
clouds without rain blown by the trees twice dead he's adding to what peter says here springs without water mist driven by storm both of these guys are referring back to ephesians 4 14 okay and then he then he elaborates even more wild waves foaming up this is more on ephesians 4 14 um, style wandering stars see they're already saved wandering stars for whom blackest darkness has been reserved forever. Okay. Now, one of the questions here that people raise is if blackest darkness is reserved for them, how come you can say that they're saved? Well, not all of them. Okay. Just because you say you're a Christian doesn't mean you believe Christ paid for your sins. All right. So, Wandering stars means that some of them are believers, okay, and some of them are not. That's it. But that's what Matthew 23 also said. You know, it says, Lord, Lord, and then he says, well, they're, you know, be departed from me. Okay, yeah, they called him Lord, but that, but that didn't mean they believed in him as Lord. All right? It's real important to parse out Matthew 23 properly. Matthew 23 is talking about two groups of people, unbelievers who pretend to be believers and believers who are apostate. Okay? And then Peter goes on in what he's saying, mouth empty, boastful words, lustful desires, they entice people, yada, yada. Okay? Let's pull that up a little bit. See? They promise freedom, all these empty... You know, all these false teachers, this is what false teachers do today. They promise freedom, but they themselves are slaves of depravity. There are two kinds of depravity. There's immoral depravity, and then there's moral depravity. Okay? For a man is a slave to whatever has mastered him. Well, immoral depravity, that's easy to see. You're enslaved to sex. You're enslaved to drugs. You know, you've enslaved yourself to, you know, whatever. Okay, but moral depravity is when you enslave yourself to good deeds. That's the kind of deprivation that the, the Pharisees were going through. And the Lord has excoriated the Pharisees, okay? But here, in Peter, all this is being skipped over. Okay, this is all being skipped over. Alright? Instead... Again, Jude inter, inter, inserts this, which he's obviously getting directly from God because the book of Enoch we have is bogus, obviously bogus. And there is no extant book of Enoch. So he's not quoting some kind of book of Enoch. He's quoting Enoch. And the only way Jude can quote Enoch is if God tells him what it was. So he's asserting, hi, I can get in this directly from God, which is what you're supposed to do if you're claiming to be a new Bible book. You have to get new information that you fold into the old information and show how it all fits together from God, and then God attests to it when the reader reads the new book. That's the way it's supposed to work. Okay? And then, having done that, which is an, a reference either to Hebrews 12, or Hebrews 12 is going to play on this. Okay. And it looks like it's going to be the latter. I'm still I'm still trying to figure out. Did the book of Hebrews come out after Peter and Jude? Or before? And if it came out after, it's coming out all in the same year. Because Timothy is released. And either Vitellius, Otho, Gal Galba, or Vespasian... Well, not Vespasian, because Vespasian was still in Jerusalem. It had to be Vitellius, Otho, or Galba had released Timothy after Nero's death. So you're talking within 12 months. And therefore, I'm, I'm, you know, the only way I can make the book of Jude later than the book of Hebrews is to say he's inserting this as new evidence corroborating Hebrews 12 without mentioning Hebrews 12 which is kind of not a very strong point to make. So I'm not sure, you know, that I'm 
proving anything. Okay, these men are grumblers and fault finders. They follow their own evil desires. All the text on the right in Peter is being subsumed right here in Jude. You can see that, right? They follow their own evil desires. They boast about themselves and flatter others. All that stuff is on the right-hand side in more detail. Okay? Because he's already introduced this new idea about high judgment is coming. In other words, that's what he's been saying all along. Okay? See, first he starts out with the analogy, you're delivered out of Egypt and you still didn't believe, so you got judged. Okay? The angels left their own estate and they finally get judged. Okay, Sodom and Gomorrah went on, didn't listen, they got judged. Okay? And they got judged because they're, they're doing what even angels won't do. Okay? And then he sums that up by saying they're doing it for gain, just like Cain did, just like Balaam did, just like Korah did. Cain means acquirer. It has other meanings, like spear. That's really funny, actually. But um, Cain was very acquisitive. All right, so that's why he's, he's lumped in with the greed motive right here. Okay? So he's basically setting up the potential. Listen, these guys are among you now. The blemishes at your communion services. And they have no qualm whatsoever. Okay? Twice dead, meaning they're saved. It's really important. Get this very clear in your head. They're saved. You can't be twice dead if you're not already saved. You're saved, so you were dead in your sins. Now you're saved. Now you're dead because you're carnal. But you're still saved. Okay? Just like Paul was saying in Ephesians 4.14, right here. Okay? But not all of them are saved. So, they're going to go into that same darkness that was reserved for the angels. Okay? <clears throat> because the Lord is coming back. This is a rapture verse. It's also a second advent. He's talking about both events in, in the same way. Because, see, the rapture has to occur in order for the Lord to come back at the second advent. And, of course, Revelation 20 plays on this. All right? And so the, and this is also played on in Hebrews 12. I'm going to, I, it looks like it's played on by Hebrews. It looks like Hebrews is later. Okay, grumblers and fault finders. That's the text you see in right in blue okay and then Peter of course ends with dog vomit okay he's quoting the Old Testament there I want to say that's in um, Isaiah 40 or 28 something like that um, and then but this is where Jude departs now he's going on the upscale he's going just remember what our apostles foretold See, the one foretelling, he's already been telling you. He doesn't have to say which one. Because Peter's talking in the same vein as Matthew 23. See, this is Peter doing the foretelling. So when he's saying what the apostles of our Lord foretold, he's referring specifically to Peter. But Peter's not the only one who talked like this. Okay, Paul talked like this. In each one of his letters, he had something to say. Okay, the Lord, of course, talked about that, and Matthew was one of the apostles to the Jews, and Matthew wrote the gospel. Okay, and that's where Matthew 23 is located. So he's lumping it all together. But he's specifically referring to the apostles, which I find very interesting, because he's actually one of them. Okay, but he's talking about the other ones. They said to you, in the last time there will be scoffers yeah right here but that's actually in Matthew 23 also okay these are the men who divide you that's in 1st Corinthians by the Apostle Paul okay and do follow natural instincts and do not have the spirit so he's linking Paul and Peter together so Peter's dead at this point okay I mean, the argument that I'm making to say the order and everything is not 100% secure. But I'm just pointing out the things that are in favor of it. I can't find anything exactly against it, but it doesn't seem that the proof in favor of it is as strong as it needs to be. 
but maybe I'm wrong. You know, this is a journey. Like I said, this is these are journal videos. Okay, but you, dear friends, build yourself up in the most holy faith, pray in the spirit. Okay, that's Ephesians three, and of course that's how Peter closes his letter in Second Peter three down here. Let's see. And that's see where it says to him be glory both now and forever. Okay, so he's elaborating on that. This is what John will elaborate on. Or I'm, I'm reasonably certain John's elaborating on Jude. But again, this is a one verse statement. So I have to wonder sometimes if maybe Jude isn't just reminding them of John. In which case, Jude is much later than John, which means that our Bible books are out of order. Okay? Be merciful to those who doubt. This is uh, James, James 4 and 5. Snatch others from the fire, James 4 and 5. See, because his theme is, his theme is, remember what the apostles foretold. So he's doing a sort of bullet list. Here is Peter, okay? And not just Peter, Paul had talked about this too. This is Pauline, okay? This is Peter and Paul, especially, especially Ephesians 3. This is what you see on the right-hand side of the screen, okay? And this is also going to be echoed if, if John is later. It's going to be echoed as the whole theme of John, his gospel and all three letters. Be merciful to those who doubt, echoes James. Snatch others from the fire, echoes James. To others show mercy, echoes James. Okay? And he's he's making sort of a funny analogy here that I don't know if I want to get into. But um, some of that is slightly Pauline. And some of it is Book of Hebrews at the end in chapters 12 and 13. And then he comes with the doxology which I don't think that's the first time that it's said. I think that it's it's an it's a conglomeration of the Psalms. But you know, we could talk about that. So that's pretty much as far as I got I'm gonna go with this now. Uh, I still you know, that's as much proof as I can think of to at least justify it being a book of the Bible. But I'm not hundred percent convinced that all this, you know, pro about what Jude is referring to really proves that it predates the book of Hebrews and even whether it predates John. It might be later, but I don't know how to prove that yet. So that's all I got right now. Signing